helping make your life easier. Moms Every Day. Hi, welcome to Moms Every Day. I'm Hattie Cheek. Melissa Lay is with me from Marshall Obstetrics and Gynecology at Cabell Huntington Hospital. And we're going to be talking about something that can be a big stressor for you if you're trying to get pregnant and it's it's just not happening the way you want it to, or maybe it's taking a little bit longer. But uh, one thing that I know is on everybody's mind is does the age of a woman affect her fertility? Age does have an effect on fertility. Just like all the cells in the body, the genetic genetics break down as we age, and eggs are no exception. So a, a woman who's in their late 30s, early 40s, her eggs have aged up to that point as well. Is that one of the most common causes of this, or are there others? There are other causes of infertility. Tubal disease is one cause, mm. which would be tubal obstruction or tubal inflammation, infections. Um, ovarian dysfunction is also a common cause of infertility, uh, the most common being polycystic ovarian syndrome. And um, male factor is a cause of infertility as well. 40 to 50 percent of infertility couples suffer from a male factor diagnosis. Diagnosis. Now, is that is that the male factor diagnosis? That's the problem with dad. That's the problem with the sperm. Yes. So low. Does it is is it the low sperm count that affects it? A low sperm count can contribute to infertility, but. Even just with a low sperm count, um, a male is capable of producing a pregnancy. Okay. It's an extremely low count that can actually cause the infertility. But count is not the only thing. Motility, morphology, which is the shape of the sperm head and the tail. Okay. Also, antibodies to the sperm can cause interference for the sperm binding to the egg for fertilization to occur. Now, are those, uh, are those common causes as to why things like that happen? or a lot of them we, we don't really know why. There are some common causes to some male factor infertility mm -hmm. and tubal disease, those types of things, okay. but a lot of them are very hard to pin down as to why they happen or where they come from. And really when it comes down to it, if it can't happen, you, you don't even, it doesn't matter why, it's just <laughs> no. the fact that it does. But there are other things that you can go through, like vitro fertilization. Now, now how does that work? What is it? Well, in vitro fertilization is actually what occurs in the IVF laboratory, okay. um, but not everyone needs in vitro fertilization. Okay. Um, there are a minority of cases where in vitro is the only treatment, uh, you know, that is going to help achieve that pregnancy. And that's but, a more, a little more invasive than, Yes, okay. yes, that's where the eggs are actually harvested from the ovaries. The sperm and eggs are put together in a petri dish in the lab. Mm -hmm. Fertilization occurs, embryo development also occurs in the laboratory. Okay. But hundreds of babies wow. are born every day with simpler treatments such as intrauterine inseminations or or just ovulation predictor kits and timed intercourse. And I mean, is that common? Do people use that a lot more these days? They do. Um, people are more aware of um, wanting to have a child. Um, people are, inf especially infertility couples, they are very aware yes. of the joy that a child brings to a family. Because they've been looking for it. Now, is there anything that friends or family members can do to help these couples? I mean, just the biggest thing is support them. Support them in their decisions for treatment of moving forward or even if it's a decision to discontinue the treatment. Um, know what your the couple is going through, what your friends are going through as far as their procedures are concerned. Um, do some reading, um, look them up online and see what is out there and what they're actually having to deal with and the support that you can give them that way is going to be more beneficial than anything. And, and when going through with this procedure or at least looking into it, I mean do you need a referral? How does that whole process you don't actually need a referral to see Dr. Burns, the infertility okay. specialist at Marshall Obstetrics, but um, it's nice for you just to sit down first with your gynecologist and discuss with them your concerns about having not become pregnant and then let them decide with you whether or not you should see a specialist. Okay, so definitely if you're looking into something like that, the first
first thing that you should go through is to talk to your friends, just get the help that you need. And uh, just take a look at your screen right now. That's more information on how to get in touch with you guys, the phone number for the IF, IVF lab and the physician's phone number. So if you need any more information, you can always just head to our website, WSAZ.com. You can click on the Moms Every Day tab. Now that'll take you to watch this interview once again in case you wanted to go over something else that you heard. Maybe you weren't sure, but then make sure that you download our app as well because there's a lot of good stuff that all you moms out there can head to there. We will be right back after the break with more Moms Every Day, so stick around.